welcome back to the breakdown today. I'm going to be teaching you how to get clear lag, how to set it up, how to do everything with clear lag, including how to use it in game. We're going to be going over the config, all of the commands, all of that stuff. After this, you'll be a clear lag expert. But first and foremost, this video is brought to you by Apex Minecraft Hosting. If you're looking for an incredible Minecraft server host, Apex fits the bill with 24 hour servers and incredible DDoS protection. They are the best out there, bar none. We love Apex so much that we use them ourselves on our own Minecraft server, play.breakdowncraft.com. So if you're looking for a great server host, Apex is the one for you. You can check them out at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get clear lag set up. First and foremost, what does clear lag do? Well, as it says right here, it was designed to reduce the lag on bucket or spigot servers. If you're not already running a spigot server, set one up. And actually, I would recommend running a paper server. You can check out the eye at the top of your screen up there to see how to set up a paper server. And paper actually takes spigot and optimizes that even more. Any spigot or bucket plugins can run on paper and they're even more optimized because paper itself is just very, very optimized. Now, clear lag is good for removing entities and preventing basically all sorts of entity and mob lag, whether it's entities floating on the ground like items or whether it's just lag from a bunch of mobs being on your server. It clears those every five minutes or every minute, however long you set it up. You can set it up once an hour, however you want to do it, you can set that up with clear lag to clear all the items on the ground in addition to the entities and things like that that are on your server, such as mobs, even things like pigs, cows, things like that can be cleared. Anything you want to be cleared with clear lag, you can do it. It also allows you to run a lag check, which is something we use quite often to be able to get kind of the real-time statistics of the server. So, nevertheless, let's go ahead and get it installed. The first thing you want to do is go to the second link down below, and let's just take you here to the clear lag plugin page. And one thing you might notice here is this plugin hasn't been updated since 2017. That typically would be a big issue. I wouldn't do a plugin video on a plugin that's not been updated in so long, but if we come down here, the mod author does say that he is going to be updating it to 1.13 very soon. So hopefully that update will come out. I do know nothing will change about this video. It'll all be the same here. But nevertheless, once you're on this page, you want to click the download latest file. We actually do use this on our own 1.13 server without any issues. So while this isn't updated to 1.13, it works with 1.13. It just won't clear 1.13 mobs like husk and things like that. So that is something you have to keep in mind. But clear lag is now downloaded in the bottom left. If I minimize my browser, it's on our desktop. Yours may be in your downloads folder. But once you've got clear lag here, just go ahead and drop it into your Minecraft server plugins folder. Now I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and run the server because we need to generate the configs. And if we double click on the plugins file here or the plugins folder, excuse me, after this is generated, we will see clear lag folder pop up here. And with that, there'll be a config, and in that config, we can get rocking. So there it is, the clear lag folder. Double click on that, and then we have this config here. I'm going to go ahead and edit that with Notepad plus plus. That is my preferred text editor. If you have one that you prefer, go ahead and open up that. Otherwise, Notepad plus plus is linked in the description down below. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and look at this config. So there are a lot of things in this config here. I'm actually going to be going through most of them. Some of them we will be skipping and just saying, you know, you can use those on your server. But overall, you're wanting to leave what's up here at the top the same. Hopper limit, you can change this if you want. But actually, if you're using paper, it's controlling your hoppers, not clear lag. So if that's the case, you'll just leave that default. But if you want to, you can go ahead and change that. Now, RAM meter, this can actually be cool to change to true. Now, what this does is if your RAM hits like 5,000, for example, or 5 gigabytes-ish of RAM, then you'll be able to go ahead and execute these commands. For example, it'll kill mobs, it'll then clear any ground items with lag clear, and then it will do GC, which is going to clear any RAM and basically run a garbage collector, kind of clearing out any unnecessary usage of RAM there. Now, on our server, for example, we have 16 gigabytes of RAM. This is set at 14.5. Right, so at 14,500 megabytes of RAM usage or 14.5 gigabytes, you will be able to, this will all happen, right? And it's going to check for this every 20 ticks. I've actually changed this up a bit. That way it's not constantly checking for it to actually every 120 ticks, which is quite a lot. You might want to leave that default, but that is something you can enable if you're worried about RAM usage and running out of RAM. We've actually never triggered this on our server. We have plenty of RAM, more than enough, but overall it is something to set up, especially if you're running a lower RAM server and want to make sure things are kept nice and tidy there. Player speed limit, just leave that default if you want. I've never had a reason to use that. Mob breeding limiter, however, 
is pretty cool. So basically what this is going to do is the maximum amount of mobs that are allowed in a check radius, right? So basically that would mean the check radius is right here. And the check radius is the radius around an area that you can have mobs. So in this case, it is a 15 block radius and the maximum amount of mobs you can have is six. I'll read that off. I've never used that. Log purger, never, never purged logs, basically. These are the logs that are kept on your Minecraft server. If we open up our server folder here and go back to the main folder, we have these logs. These are all here. It never had a reason to purge them. It is important to keep those logs, in my opinion, at least for 30 days, so I wouldn't do that. Area filter as well, as it says, when you do lag area, what entities should not be removed? I would leave this the same. Basically, when you do lag area, it's going to clean, clear all the lag in a radius around you in a certain area that you define. So that's what this is going to do, and it's going to leave item frames, mine carts, wolves, villagers, horses, and armor stands. That's pretty good there. You might also want to include snowmen or something like that. Whatever you want to do, you can keep that in there. And then for config updater, force update, we want to leave that as false. Mob egg limiter, as well as chunk limiter. And if we come down here, TNT dash minecart, dispenser reducer, TNT reducer, and fire spread reducer are all basically similar things for, you know, whatever it says. For example, the mob egg limiter is going to allow you to not place so many mob eggs in one area. You can't spam more than, in this case, five mobs in a radius of eight. For example, using mob eggs. Then if we come on down here to TNT, this is kind of the similar thing. You can't have more than two TNT in a radius. And same thing with TNT reducer here. Now, dispenser reducer is a bit different. This is going to ch change how much and how quickly dispensers fire in milliseconds. You can update this if you want, if you're getting a lot of dispenser lag on the server, as well as turn it on. All these are false by default, and you need to turn them on. I personally have all of these off on our server. No reason for us to use them. One thing I do want to mention here is is the mob range. And what mob range basically means is the view distance of mobs. This is actually something you could turn on and turn it down. Turn it down, for example, to 15. Cut all those in half and you'll be pretty good. However, you can also limit mobs with spigot, so that's not necessarily something you need to do. But if you are having a lot of mob lag, you can change that there. We actually do have that enabled on our server. Live time here, or live time, live time? What live time? Basically is how long a mob can live after it is like on the ground are just sitting there. This can also be for items, for example. As you can see, this is disabled, but if you want to make, for example, items stay on the ground for 15 ticks or less than a second, you can do that before arrows despawn, for example, or before mobs despawn, or before items despawn. You can define all of this. Personally, we don't use that and just use a thing that we're going to move down to here eventually, and that is the repeating timer to clear mobs. So we've got all these reducers here, which we've already covered, and then chunk entity limiter. Now, this can be really cool, and this is how many entities you can have in a chunk. For example, if you turn this to true, you're going to be able to have a maximum of 10 entities in a chunk. Now, the thing is, if an entity isn't included in this entity down here, it's not going to work. For example, you can only have 10 pigs in a chunk. You can only have 10 sheep, 10 cows, 10 horses. We personally don't have this because we allow mob farms that kill mobs within 30 seconds on our server. But if you didn't want that, for example, and wanted to control the amount of entities you have, this right here can be a good way to do it. And it's actually one of the only ways I know to do it. And I'm sure there are other but this is how I would do it, is using clear lag, changing this to true, setting your entity limit, and then defining what entities you want here. Now we move on down. The spawn limiter is how many mobs should be allowed to spawn globally on your server. For example, if you were to go ahead and change this to true, it would only allow 300 mobs and 300 animals to spawn on the server. Now, on our server, we actually don't have a mob limiter, but if I was to set one right now, I would probably do about 10,000 and then 5,000 for mob limiting on a 60 to 70 player server. 300 is going to be good for just your basic server for you and your friends. If you wanted to turn that on, again, if you're having entity lag. Now, TPS meter is actually the same thing as the RAM check up here, right? Where if we go up to the top, the RAM meter, TPS meter is the same. I'll leave that off because you don't want this constantly. TPS fluctuates a lot. Literally, some ticks will have a TPS loss of 50%. I mean, we'll be at 10 TPS, but it's just for a split second, not for the entire time. So if you have this monitoring this, even at an interval of 15, it can still be kind of crazy. So I personally wouldn't do this and just leave this off and let the RAM check deal with that. And then you can do a lag check and deal with TPS issues yourself. Kill mobs. Now this is what basically... I use all the time if we have entity lag on our server, and that is kill mobs. Now, if you want to remove named, meaning if someone has a name tag on a mob, you kill it. I wouldn't recommend turning that on. You can do that. And then mob filter is stuff that will not be included. Okay, this will not be included 
in your kill mobs. For example, villagers, wolves, armor stands, and horses. You could also add in llamas. Things like that there that you didn't want cleared with kill mobs. Mob spawner can just be really left to fall. And basically, this is the amount of mobs a mob spawner can spawn. It's set to four, honestly. And that's four active mobs out at a time. I would just leave that off. No reason to mess with that. That'll just make people angry, to be honest. Remove mobs on chunk unload is kind of cool, but it is default to true here. However, you need to change this to true for it to work. I would just leave that off. Item merger. This is something that you do not need to touch ever. Never touch that because spigot is already doing it for you and you need to use spigot for auto removal options this is why everyone uses clear lag i went through the rest of the config because it's important to know but this right here is what everybody uses clear lag for so auto removal is enabled and basically this is going to remove entities from the server does it broadcast it is set to true and if you want to change what it says when it broadcasts you can do that here and using bucket color codes to color it now we have the auto removal set for 460 that is actually in seconds so every 460 seconds or about seven and a half minutes mobs will be removed there if a world should be discluded you can add it there if boats are included in the auto removal you can do that if falling blocks are if experience orbs are if paintings are leave that as false if projected are turn that on if items in general are you can do that there if item frames are leave that false but you can do that there if minecarts are and if tnt that is primed can do that basically tnt that's about to explode is removed now item filter is items you don't want to be removed in this case we can actually do this space down two spaces over and then do a diamond underscore sword right like so and now a diamond sword is not going to be removed by the auto removal we have a bunch of stuff there now this will also remove entities not just you know the items it will also remove entities however the entities must be listed down here for example you'll need to go ahead and add in a cow if you want it to be listed or removed i should say you can also take and add pigs in down here for example but you can use this live time equals function and basically this means that it will only be removed if it's been alive for 100 ticks or five seconds right so that means if it's alive for five seconds here this will be removed however you can change that to 500 ticks if you want for example and it would be about 50 seconds or so i believe i think that's how the math would work out or would it be about 25 seconds there so that's how that can work you can also set up your warnings down here as you can see it will be removed in blank amount of seconds and then it will be removed in blank amount of seconds so that actually sets that up to where those warnings are sent out and uh, everything is good this is what it will say whenever entities are removed these are your warnings down here and by default it's true meaning that every 400 in 60 seconds your mobs will be removed your items on the ground will be removed and this right here is the warning it will give it'll warn you 400 seconds and 440 seconds so basically uh, 160 seconds before and then around 100 seconds before it is removed so there is that and that is how you can do that you also have a command removed down here which is lag clear lag clear is basically the same thing as this except the only difference is that it is going to be ran by you i would basically mirror anything items that are removed up here put them into down here basically items that aren't removed excuse me and mobs that are removed up here add them down here now for limit this is basically the mob limit if you reach that thousand mobs for example it will go ahead and clear them all that's what that is but i'll leave that off by default if you can however you're having a lot of entity issues that can be a way to fix it so there you go basically these are the big things about the config the rest of the stuff is optional but these two things right here you want to keep and you want to have so we have all that set up right there that is all looking good we can actually see clear lag over here working ground items will be removed in 60 seconds in 20 seconds removed zero items skips forward about five minutes there removed in 60 seconds and so on and so forth when it says removing ground items it is also removing entities by the way it's not just ground items it is also mobs that is something to keep in mind but the mobs do have to be listed here let's go ahead and save that config and then we can actually do lag l-a-g-g -G, reload here so lag reload and there we go it will go ahead and reload that now we are getting all kinds of invalid entity attributes to the auto removal so we can go ahead and come down here and see that we have these entities set up wrong and it's just where i'm guessing all of this is right here 
all of this info about it. That's probably what's freaking it out there. So if we go ahead and save and then do lag reload, there we go. All mod attempting reload, all modules have been reloaded. So just had to remove that little extra text after the pig and the cow down here. And there we go, that's fixed. Now let's go ahead and join on into this server in game and we'll be able to go over the commands. However you do want to go ahead and make sure that this is reloaded. I'm just gonna reload it again and that'll sync everything, make sure everything's there and it should remove it now. I'm gonna go ahead and direct connect into this server just using my local IP address. Wait, what was that? Play.breakdowncraft.com. Oh, that is the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. This is actually our Minecraft server. It still joined us on into this one. As you can see over there we are. But nevertheless, we're in here now and we're gonna have all sorts of commands if we run slash L-A-G-G. That's going to give you a thing that says you don't have permission. And that's because ClearLag does have its own permissions. If we come over here, we can see what these permissions are right here. This actually also lists out all the commands if you want to see them over here and what they do. We're going to be going over most of these in game though. However, if you want to assign these permissions, you can. Otherwise, you'll need to opt yourself on the server to be able to get access to this. For example, if you only want ops to be able to do this, that's a way that you can do it. But now we can run slash lag. As you can see, there is a pretty self-explanatory things here. Lag clear, clear the entities from your world for example if you do in game here slash lag space clear we'll see that i have removed seven entities you can do lag area and if you do lag area you'll need to do a radius so lag area 10 for example will clear all the entities in the 10 block radius of you zero were clear because there were none around me now we want to go ahead and do lag chunk that will find laggy chunks on your server not lag check we'll get to that in a minute but if you do lag chunks that will give you the lag chunks on your server that is not something i recommend using never have had any success with that. So then we can go down here to lag GC. This is going to be the garbage collector and clear RAM on your server. So if we run that real quick, we will see that it is attempting to clear some memory and it will clear some memory and open up some memory on your server. Now, one thing I want to talk about here is actually this lag check, right? So if you run slash lag space check, you'll get some awesome insights on your server. The mobs alive, the friendly mobs alive, the players alive, the chunks loaded, all sorts of stuff, including your TPS and RAM usage. This is something we use all the time. If players are complaining about lag, do lag space check there and you'll be good. Then if you're on paper, you can do sp slash timings paste and you'll get a link to be able to see the active lag on your server. However, as we can see, we are running good at a 19.8 TPS here and our RAM usage is very low compared to the three gigs this server has. Overall though, the interesting thing is to see if you have mob entities alive right now of 66 and say you had 2000 and your lag was, server was lagging and normally you have a thousand, that's most likely where the lag is coming from. That can also be backed up by a timing report. Again, if you were running a paper server, yet another reason you should be running a paper server. Now we do slash lag here. There are a few more commands. Lag kill mobs is going to, well, kill all mobs. So if we do lag kill mobs, it'll remove the mobs in the world. As you can see, 319 were removed there. Now if you do slash lag check, for example, you're going to see that there are no mobs alive because we just killed them. We just killed all those mobs there. Now we come back up here. We can see there is lag reload. That's what we did earlier to reload the plugin. Lag TP chunk, no reason to use that, never needed to use that. However, lag unload chunks is a pretty cool setup. And what this is going to do is unload chunks on your server. So as we can see here, there are 953 chunks loaded. We do lag unload chunks. It unloads 512 chunks. If we do lag check, we can now see that that has been reduced by that many chunks or right about that many. We have 441 loaded now. We had 953 loaded. So that is how you can see that can help. If say your server has a bunch of chunks loaded, like we'll hit over 10,000 chunks loaded sometimes on our server, we'll do a lag unload chunks and that'll be reduced by two, 3,000 chunks and significantly reduce the server load. That is why that is so important. That's why that command is so important. Moving on from there, we do have lag halt, and that's going to halt the server's activities. Specifically, it is going to stop basic server functions like mob spawning, water running. Say, for example, if we run lag halt and then place a bucket of water down, it wouldn't move, it wouldn't run, it wouldn't do anything. It would just sit there until lag halt is undone, and then you would have to replace that bucket of water. I would never recommend doing lag halt. We've had to do it a few times in our server back before we switched to Apex. We were on a crappy host, and we had to do lag halt, but I would not recommend ever doing that. Do everything like lag unload chunks, lag kill mobs, lag clear, all of that before you do lag halt. Lag halt 
seriously diminishes player experience. But nevertheless, that is what you can do. That is the overview of Peter Lag. If you need help on these plugins, just do slash lag. And they do explain them there. If you have any questions, post those in the comment section down below. I am more than happy to help you out. And come join us on play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. We're running clear lag over there, as well as tons of awesome plugins for an incredible 1.13.2 and soon 1.14 survival experience. Again, that is play.breakdowncraft.com. Come play with us. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown, and I am out. Peace.